of a promise keeper. Woo. Glory, glory, glory. Uh, good evening, church, and welcome to uh, our midweek Bible study. And uh, I, I almost want to call it a refueling time because, you know, we need to, to stop and and if you got an electric car, you want to plug it in and, and get the battery juiced up. Yes, sir. And if you're driving on some gasoline, you want to want to pull over and refuel. Right. Top it off. And you know, my daddy used to say, "Don't click it too many times after." So he was he was worried about the pennies. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you got to click it a few more times. Yes, <laughs> and so uh, that's what uh, that's what we do. You know, we come in here on Wednesday night to to hear the word and get a taste of the word and discuss the word and, and you know it's something special about that because uh, you look in the book of Acts that that's what they did uh, they were devoting themselves to studying the word and discussing the word and and we we and, and that's good that's healthy for us because it helps us to to grow and help us to to uh, to uh, understand what blaming blaming we're in, we're in Philemon. It's uh, right after uh, Titus. Titus is uh, right after Timothy. Amen. Amen. It's only one. I'll, I'll tell you the verse here in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you the verse. But anyway, let's 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 pray. Uh, Father God, thank you that you are a way maker, a miracle worker. And just recently, Lord, I was uh, talking to someone about the miracles and how the miracles go hand in hand with the gospel and the spreading of the, the good news. And, and Lord, how we desire to see miracles alive and active today, Lord, those signs and those wonders. And you said that, that, that they will precede those and, 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 and people will believe when they see these signs and wonders. And, and what we're talking about, Father, is healings. We're talking about uh, restoration. We're talking about uh, even the, the act of salvation, Lord. That, that, that's a miracle for us, Lord, who receive you. Thank you for that, Lord. So tonight, Father, as we look into your word, I pray, God, that you give us revelation knowledge, a deeper understanding of, of the truth and principles that, that's written in the book of Philemon. And God, I pray that, that, that we will be enriched that we will have some good discussion, and we thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, we left off uh, verse 12. Uh, Paul was talking about, about sending, uh, sending him back. As a matter of fact, let me read verse 12. Uh, actually, let me read verse 11, because Paul said this, that, that he was unprofitable. Once he was unprofitable to you, but now it's profitable to you and to me. And so, so Paul is getting ready to appeal to Philemon's uh, better judgment uh, as, a, as a brother. And, and it's something about it. When we look at this appeal that Paul is making, we're going to see that, that he's, he, he could have come in as an apostle. And he could have instructed him or told him or directed him what to do. But Paul wanted uh, uh, this to be a voluntary action, and, and he was praying and believing that Philemon was going to do the right thing. And so he's making this appeal to him, and we're going to see how 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 tactful Paul uh, goes about uh, with this, uh, this with this appeal. And then Paul goes on to say in, in uh, verse 12, he says, "So I'm sending him back to you." Now, when, and remember, let's recap this a little bit. Philemon, he left. He was a runaway slave, right. plus he was a thief, because he, you know, he stole from him. And so both of those, both of those in instances required a could have required a penalty of death. Mm -hmm. So he was already uh, a marked person, and, and there was no way I'm going back. I mean, that's probably what I would have said. I'm not going back. <laughs> but what happens after he runs away from Colossae, he goes to Rome and runs into Paul. <laughs> and as a as a uh, 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 um, meeting Paul, he got converted. Paul converted this young man, and so now he has become helpful and useful to Paul. But Paul is saying this. He says, "Look, we need to get this thing straight because you you're a runaway slave, you're a thief, 
you know, you need to be reconciled with your with your master. And and but now there's a new twist to this thing because now he's a brother. He's a he's a born again believer. Yes. And and Paul is saying, uh, I'm sending you back. And remember we talked about this last week that Paul said I want to send you back, but didn't didn't Onesimus didn't he have to agree to that? <laughs> I mean because. Because like I just said earlier, I'm not going back. Right. <laughs> and and that would have been the first instinct. Uh, yeah, I, I can be born again, but I'm, I don't want to go back. And, and and I would have been asking Paul, how does that affect me being born again? <laughs> you know, not going back. But but somewhere along the line, Anissimus had to agree to go back. Yeah. Because he knew that, that, that he could still, depending on his master's decision, he could have still faced this death penalty, or he could have still uh, uh, faced some harsh uh, punishment for what he did. And so, uh, so you know, it's, it's like a rock between a rock and a hard place. But it, it must have been something that that took place in his transformation. You know, that something that took place that convinced him that this was the right thing for him to do, because he 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 found this inner peace and that's what happens with the Lord because sometimes uh, we may find ourselves uh, in dire straits and afraid to do something but then once we meet God and we have this relationship with the Lord it doesn't matter you know that somebody know that I was I was this or it doesn't matter that somebody uh, know about my background or where I came from or what I did uh, we don't have to always go around telling everybody that stuff but it doesn't matter. So Onesimus had to come to a place in his, his thought process. It doesn't matter. I'm going back to face whatever befalls me. Now, if if the thing that, that I'm trusted in right now is Jesus Christ, if that's real, mm -hmm. then whatever the outcome is going to be is going to be real too. Yeah. And so he he you know he he reached that that conclusion there. So Paul is saying to to Onis to uh, Philemon in this letter that I'm sending him back to you. He was unprofitable to you, but along the way he's become not only profitable to you, but also to me mm -hmm. because he was a big help. Yes. And Paul also, uh, you know, he showed how to be persuasive, not just physically, but also spiritually. That's how he got people to come first because he was, you know, as you read, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I beseech you. Yes. He's being persuasive to, to try to get you to see things as he sees them. Oh, yeah. He understands the fact that, you know, even with our walk with God, it is a chosen one. Mm -hmm. it, we don't just, you know, up, up and here it is. Yeah. We, we, we come to our point in our lives, and, you know, you have to ask yourself, is what I'm venturing into better than what I mean? Yeah. And you're saying, hey, man, I need to change. That, and that's where it comes in. And so Paul mm -hmm. used that. And this shows where his education oh, yeah. pays off. Right. Is because he was persuasive to that guy. Because he could have said, no, nah, I ain't going. I, I know it was to be a slave. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And, and so he was persuasive. It's yeah. like when, when, when Christ talks to us, he doesn't come in and say, you're going to serve me. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. He no. doesn't do it that way. Yeah. No. No. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. So. And, and, it's, and, and Paul makes it evident that he would desire that Onesimus stay with him. Amen. In verse 13, he says, I, Whom I wish to keep with me, that on your behalf, uh, he might minister to me on your behalf, because I'm in chains. Mm -hmm. And he says, in chains for the gospel's sake. So Paul always is throwing the spiritual uh, aspect in there, too. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that he, Remember, I'm not a prisoner of Nero, or I'm not a prisoner of Rome. I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Right. And so and I'm in chains for the gospel. Right. And so he, he's pointing it out. I'm in chains for the gospel's sake. So, so it was clear that Paul wanted him to stay, but Paul also needed to do the right thing too. You know, <laughs> he's not only telling this man, and it's something, you know, that we could tell somebody they need to do the right thing. And yeah. remember we, when we were studying that about the, uh, the, uh, the, the the leaders, the, mm -hmm. the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, yeah. they were supposed to have been teachers, right. teaching people how to how to do, do right, mm -hmm. 
but they wouldn't do it right. <laughs> you know, but Paul is not going to just tell this man that he needs to do the right thing, and, and then Paul turns around and don't do the right thing. So he's telling, uh, uh, he's telling from Laman, I'm sending him back to you, even though I wish to keep him. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, and then look at this here. I would have chosen to keep him, verse 13. I would have chosen to keep him with me so that he might minister to me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without first getting your consent. So he wanted a, a Philemon buy-in. Isn't that something? You know, he wanted his buy-in to, to what was taking place. I wouldn't do it without getting your consent first. And so that your goodness would not be uh, in effect by compulsion, of what we were just talking about, but of your own free will. I mean, because he could have demanded this, but he says, look, it's one thing to demand something, but it's another thing when you accept it out of your own free will. And see, that's the whole thing behind God, Amen. us serving the Lord, Amen. is that he, he, could, he could have stamped us and made us do what we could have been a little pup. And like the angels, they're ministering spirits. They're, they were, uh, uh, you know, he, he had created angels because they're ministering spirits. He won a free will, you know, so he gives us a free will. And that's what Paul is hinging on right here, that I want you to do this under your own free will, whatever. And guess what? He hadn't even asked them what he wanted them to do yet. <laughs> so all the way up to, so far up to chapter, verse 13, he hadn't even told him what this is all about. I'm sending them back to you. I want you to do something. Now he's going to start to, to get into what he's requesting or re asking him to do. He says, but I wanted to do this. Uh, uh, I didn't want to keep him or do anything without your consent. Mm -hmm. He says, so I decided to do nothing. So Paul made an appeal, and he made this appeal, and it was strong, and it was skillful, uh, as, as the pastor was saying. You know, Paul is using uh, all of his uh, his qualities. He's, he's educated. He's a, a skillful orator. He, I mean, he's. I mean, all of these different things that he's doing, he's compiling it, and that's the reason why scholars love this letter because it it encompasses a whole uh, uh, a lot of ramifications of Paul. It's, it's, and guess what? And Paul didn't approach him like he approached everybody else on the authority of his apostleship, but he approached them on the authority of his friendship and love. You know, he, he mixed a little bit of grace in there too, some graces in there, mm -hmm. uh, some, 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 some mercies in there. I mean, all of this stuff is mixed up in there, and Paul is throwing it out, and he's throwing it out, out strong. Uh, any comments before we go to verse uh, uh, 14? But as you uh, iterate, I know it has to be wrong, but this is what's so bad. Robbing his master. Yeah. Yeah. And then running away because you know the penalty of that you say because oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that's what happens. But, and, but Paul is quickly with a letter off the <laughs> the letter to take back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's 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 carrying his own letter. He's carrying the letter. Yeah. <laughs> you you go deliver this, go deliver this to Paul. <laughs> it's about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know how it felt. That's kind of hard, hard not like you. I, you know, and, and, and you think about even um, uh, going back over some old boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know, think about some of the things that we've encountered in our life. Going back over some old boundaries that that sometimes we don't want to do that. Yeah. And and I'm not compelling anybody to do that unless God compels you to do it. You right. know. But you know, it's, it's just a, a, a difficult situation. Mm -hmm.
for this in his life because we would like to think that it was a coincidence that Paul and him met. Yeah. But it, it was, was, was not. It was yeah. not a coincidence. Yeah. It was God's providence in his life, and, and we call it, you know, happenstance and occurrence. But it, it, it was God, and nothing happens by happenstance. Right. It happens because God wants it to. And so, you know, Paul was the type of person, and, and we know about Paul and how he persuaded others to come against God's people. Mm -hmm. And now God has taken him, polished him up, and said, look, we're going to flip it. Now I'm going to use you to save God's, God's people. people. Ooh, boy, oh boy, good God Almighty. Yes, amen. yes, amen. And we talk about that free will. And you know, uh, I want to read this. If Paul had, and I'm emphasizing had, if Paul had had uh, um, demanded uh, for Laman to take Onesimus back, then that would that's the compulsion. He would have put him under compulsion to do something. But yet he wanted him to do something voluntarily, which is free will. And so, uh, so Paul, you know, in, in, in essence, what Paul did was he skillfully and tactfully addressed the situation so that a, so that Philemon can get a reward. Think about this: if Philemon does the right thing, he's going to be rewarded not by Paul; he's going to be rewarded by God. Yeah. You know, he's going to be rewarded through his relationship that he's already established with the Lord. And so that's where that reward comes in. So sometimes we have to think more than just about ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we think about about what we're doing in this relationship. But it seems like to me that he almost did that dead out line trick on him <laughs> to make it think it was his idea <laughs> to, to take, take him back. He pumped him up. I mean, you know, <laughs> And, and, and look what he said in verse 15. He says, perhaps it was for this reason, as the pastor said, that he was separated from you. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, a mistake. You know, it was for this reason. What was the reason? So that he can become a, a child of God. For this reason, he can be, be born again. He says uh, that he separated from you for a while so that you would have him back forever. Isn't that something? How, I mean, and he's saying, look, he took all of that bad stuff that, that probably uh, Philemon was thinking. And guess what? Philemon wasn't thinking it by himself because remember, his wife is involved. Mm -hmm. And then his son, who was probably might even be uh, some official in the church, mm -hmm. the church body, because they know, you know, they had probably knew that, that Onesimus was a slave. Yeah. Really. You know, all of a sudden Onesimus shows back up. You know, they, they, they read, they got the stones. You know, they, they already picking up some stones. Oh, <laughs> when they saw him come through the gate, they went out and got a bunch of stones. You know, they say he had, he had come to the city. They had a thing to call flogging. I guess that's what they That's right. That's where they that's right. whipped him publicly, either a whip or a stick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, oh, yeah. And, 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 be, and, be, and they be saying, yeah, because if that had been me. <laughs> well, we have to go on. We have to. I know you're saying that's bad than you. But we have to go on faith and, yeah, and, and yeah. believe and know the outcome yeah. is going to be. And then if the outcome isn't that, I think like the like the guys that was Shadrach, Meshach, and they, 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 yeah, yeah. they just said, you know, we were going to buy it out. Right, and yeah. whatever the outcome is. Mm -hmm. And look at the look at the wording that Paul uses. He departed for a while. <laughs> right, right. I mean, like said, what was he? Yeah, what was yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, he was he yeah, was like an he escape. He, he was a he was a runaway slave. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> he put it so casual. Yeah. He dressed right. it up. Like, you he know, said, like he like he sent them to Paul. He departed. Yeah. He departed for a while. And 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 that. Yeah, you know, none of that, that doesn't is, sound too bad, right? For the purpose. Yeah, oh, he has to fight it for a while, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> he does but, call for you, though. Right, yeah. right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but yet, remember, because uh, last week I mentioned that Paul is actually also 
So walking the real tightrope mm -hmm. because of the culture. Don't forget about the culture there and the environment they in. Right. And so, oh, yeah. so oh, yeah. he he has to stay true to also his the culture that he's in. And and if if Philemon does this of his own free will, he's not violating any of the cultural. I mean, because this man chose how he wants to treat his slave. Yeah, right, right. You know, so so Paul is Paul is directing him, like you said, uh, steering him in the right direction. And sometimes we do need to be steered in the right direction, and and it could be persuasive words or or whatever. Terminology, you know. talked about Paul says that that he, he put his heart in there right you know right. look this is my heart you know yeah. treat my heart gentle don't yeah. don't treat my heart rough right, right, he's right, my right. heart so he's endeared he's he, he's endeared to to Paul and then Paul is going to remind Onesimus that that you owe me something too I mean he's gonna I'm sorry he's gonna remind a Philemon that you owe me something too and so that you're going to gain a brother right. that you may have lost a slave mm -hmm. <laughs> but now you're going to gain a brother that you can have forever and he's talking about a, a different type of relationship that's what he's saying mm -hmm. hey he can still be a slave you know he still got chores he got to do he still but guess what he, he's doing it now as a brother meaning that that um, that he he has found favor because he's found favor with Christ now he's finding favor, you know, and you know, favor ain't fair. And now you, you have a person that you actually trust. Oh yeah, right. yeah. Right. And and you know what? And we're gonna see if we get to it tonight the outcome of what happened to Onesimus, because a lot of people say, well, what happened to him? <laughs> you know, what what? I mean, he had a great outcome. Yeah. You know, so anyway, we'll get there. So, so can we see God at work in all of this? That's the question. Can we see God at work? Oh, yeah. yeah. He says uh, that you might receive him forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a beloved brother. Verse 16. You know, so so Paul is he's he's feeding this. So he's he's reintroducing Onesimus to Philemon. You know, because when he left you, he ran away, he was a thief. He was a runaway slave, and he's coming back a brother. You know, so he's being reintroduced. 
Don't look at him as he was. Look at him as he is now. And don't we say that too? I mean, sometimes we say, and I mean, I don't know if we voice it out loud, but somebody may want to hold us to how they, how we used to be. You know, you go around some some folk from from the past, and and they remember how you were, and they don't they want to keep you in that box. Oh, I, you know, but hey, I'm not that person anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so let me reintroduce you to the person who I am right now. And so Paul is taking liberty to do that. And then verse 17, it says, so if you consider me a partner, welcome and accept him as you would me. <laughs> oh boy. Now, I don't know about you, but, but those are some, some, some uh, that's some meat right there. You know, welcome and accept him as you would me. And so Paul is putting himself right in that position. You know, and, and remember, you already said, I'm a, I'm a prisoner myself. I'm a, I'm a prisoner in chains of, for, for Jesus Christ. You know, so he understands uh, what it means about being a slave or what it means about being in prison. And, and so he's saying, look, uh, treat him like you would treat me. And uh, so Paul, again, is requesting mercy uh, for Onesimus. And then he's saying, this, he said, if I am your partner, ooh, that's something, isn't it? If, he, he's saying, Philemon, you and I had something going on. <laughs> let's, let's, let's not even talk about Onesimus. You and I had something going on. And based on that, based on our relationship, can you do the right thing? Or will you do the right thing? And Paul is, 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 is betting that the things that he instilled or he shared with, with Philemon over the course of time of their relationship, that he's going to do the right thing. You know, I, I, I'm sure that Paul is, is, is thinking that he's going to do the right thing. And so um, uh, Paul's appeal uh, seems to be very powerful, doesn't it? I mean, it's a powerful appeal uh, because he's standing beside a guilty man. Paul has taken the side of standing by a guilty man. I mean, there's no way that Onesimus can get out of this. I mean, he's guilty. I mean, not only, all right, so what? Throw out the charge of uh, being a thief. He's still guilty for running away. <laughs> or throw out, you know, reverse that. Yeah, so he's yeah, guilty he's coming and going. Either way. Yeah. yeah. And so, but Paul has taken the side of standing by this guilty man. But he's saying, and guess what? And all criminals, because remember the culture, deserve punishment, right? Did you have? Yeah, yeah I, I did. You know, uh, Paul, he was, he was trying to get the Philippians to understand that they have no other option to think of Jesus Christ and what's said. Mm -hmm. Christ standing here to make intercession for you. Yes. To, to, on your behalf, because he knows that you ain't no good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he knows that that this flesh is is bad. Yeah. But he yet stands there and he he talks to the Father on your your behalf, mm -hmm. for your leniency, your your mercy, and knowing that he's going to do the right thing. Yeah. Because then, because the mutability has to make him do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Just like with uh, Onesimus and uh, the slave. I mean, uh, who? Wait, what's the name again? Philemon. Right. And so here it is. He's got to do the right thing. Yeah. Amen. So mm -hmm. it's 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 it's. It's, it's, it's yeah. not far to not look at it as, as Christ does for right. us. Right, and when you, when you got that parallel, I mean, Paul is, is saying, look, I'm going to take his punishment. He's standing to take his punishment right. the same way that Jesus stood in Amen. and took our punishment. Lord. And, and, and before the Father. Amen. And so, so that's, the, that's the appeal that Paul is, is, uh, is, is using right here. Amen. 
And then he says this, verse 18, but if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. He says, but if he has wronged you mm. or owes you anything, right. put it on my account. Put it on my account. And, and, and so, so Paul is reminding Philemon that you owe me something. Mm. You got. I mean, and, it, and you know what? It's something when we realize that relationship that we have with Christ, right. that we can never repay that debt, never. never. So, but we try, you know, and we try to repay it. We want to do good. We want to do what's right. We want to do those things that please Him. And so that's our effort in, 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 in our walk with Christ is trying to do or working out to do the right thing, or being conformed to His image. This is and exactly that's what, what to, that's what he wants to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See the goodness in Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, because Paul, Paul actually, because uh, Onesimo really showed Paul something. Yeah. God showed him together. So he, you know, he went, he, he went to bat for the day. Yeah. Well, and, and, I, would, I wouldn't necessarily say that he showed him anything because the scripture says that God calls things not as they are, but as they shall be. Yeah. And he knew that. This, this whole situation, this circumstances was going to cause something. And what it brought, it brought for us to learn about what was done, for us to take it in. And so for him to say, you know what? I, I could be this to that person, mm -hmm. but I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to stand in there stand. So. Yeah. And, 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 and look at the two things that's going on here. Paul is saying this. If what he stole has any value, charge that to my account. You got him. So he's here, I'm returning your slave, right. and if he stole something of any value, charge that to my account. So now, it's not like, you've got both elements there. You know, so so he's dealing with the whole the whole thing. You know, he's not saying, that, he's not leaving no stone unturned. And so Paul says this, he says, uh, 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 Philemon, put that on my tab. You got to run in time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he goes on to say this. He says, I will repay it in full, not to mention to you that you owe me, even your own self as well. <laughs> mm. Ooh, boy. He said, I'll pay it in full. And, but, but, and I mean, I like those buts when they throw those buts in. <laughs> right. But remember something, you owe me something too. Boy. And 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 uh, and so that's that's how Paul leaves this thing. He says, uh, verse twenty. Yes, brother, let me have some benefit and joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Because mm. remember, Paul already said that Onesimus was a refreshing to his heart. He was refreshing to me. And he says, since I can't be with you, I would rather you be here. But because you're not here, he's standing in, in your spot, and he's refreshing me. And so, he's, again, he brings this out, and he says, look, let me have some benefit and joy. I'm a prisoner. <laughs> you know, I'm in chains. <laughs> and let me have some benefit and joy uh, from, from you and the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Meaning, do, what, is, what is he saying? He's saying, do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we thought in... Uh, who was that? Uh, uh, Spike Lee? Right. You know, he can't, no, he didn't coin that. Right. Do the right thing. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, mean, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, that's right here in the Word of God. Do the right thing. <laughs> Refresh my heart. He's, and then he's telling him, look, I'm writing, I write to you perfectly confident in your obedience compliance and your obedient compliance Ooh, you know your obedient compliance meaning I have no doubt that you're going to do the right thing you're obedient because he knew he know Paul knows this that that remember he talked about Philemon how he was uh, uh, he was out for the saints you know he opened he, he was a uh, he was a, a minister and he ministered to the saints so he, he know what kind of person he, he is, and he knows that because of that 
that he opens up his home, have a church in his home. Yeah. He he's uh, he. He's uh he's wealthy. I mean he's well off. At least he got one slave, or he had one slave. So we know that he got some money. <laughs> and unless he stole the money too, I don't know. What he, I don't know what he stole. But so, but he's saying, look, uh, obedient compliance is. I know that you will do even more than I ask. So he's uh, he's appealing to the good nature of a philanthropist. Because I'm asking you a simple thing, but guess what? I know you're gonna do more than what I ask. Yeah. And and what could be more than what he what he's asking? Ooh. I mean, and I'm thinking, um, give him his freedom. Amen. You know, that's what I'm thinking. That 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 he comes back and he's a brother now. He and he got a job. You know, I mean, he has a a, a means to, to support himself now and and guess what and it works out and so uh so paul you know he says you owe me even even your own self besides I, I love that i mean because we can't escape that you know when when you know that you're indebted to something or to someone you know somebody and, and we see that happen somebody save your life or you you know you and they feel because you say they you save my life, I'm indebted to you. Yeah. And yeah. there are cultures right now that if you save somebody's life, yeah. they endear themselves to you. Yeah. They're following you around. Yeah. They want to serve you. I mean, because of you saving their life. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's it's something. And and those are those. That's how those cultures are. And so what Paul is is, is uh, alluding to here is that that um, that you owe me something besides you know so then he said let me have that joy and, and paul uh, he wants to paul wants to sit back and and relish i think he does he wants to sit back and and say that, that he did a good thing you know I, I restored a slave to his master but now as a brother Whew. i mean that's refreshing to know that that you were uh, instrumental in this, and not be not by happenstance, you know, <laughs> you know, no, that that slave ran away from Colossae to Rome, right into into the the, and how did he run into Paul? And Paul was a prisoner, you know. I mean, think about that. That God orchestrated that thing. He he caused that path to cross, and. And, and as a result of him causing that path to cross, this man's life was changed. And, and, and Paul's life was changed too because he says that, that he gave me something that I was lacking. I needed something that he, he filled in that, that gap. He says, uh, refresh my heart, verse 20. Earlier in the letter, Paul uh, uh, was talking about how, how uh, Philemon was the man who refreshed his heart and, and the saints. He, you know, he not only refreshed his heart, but he refreshed the hearts of the saints. So we know that that for Laman, that's his character. You know, he's a he's a uh, he's a good man. You know, and, and there's nothing wrong with being a good man, being a good person. You know, and even though uh, you know, the Lord said only God is good. You know, but in this instance, you know, he was doing uh, those things that were pleasing to God. And so. Uh, and so how could this be refreshing to Paul? I'm just asking a question. How could this how could this be refreshing to Paul? Well, I think that because Paul was able to persuade him and to change his life, persuade him to come back and to face the punishment that should have been brought upon him. And then in the edification of the Lord, the Lord by him facing that. Yeah. 
So he's saying that, and he wasn't not, not only was he not bad, he was not a harsh man either. Uh, you know, I don't believe he was one of those taskmasters. Uh, but he says uh, that you're going to do more than even what I ask, meaning that you're going to go above and beyond to make sure that this situation is, is rectified. But, and then Paul, uh, he says, look, I'm going to come check on you. He says, prepare room for me, right? At verse 22, at the same time, also, look at this, at the same time, at what? At the same time that you are doing the right thing. Right. At right. the same time, also prepare a guest room for me okay. in expectation of a visit. So Paul's saying, I'm coming to check on this, the situation, at the same time, because uh, I, I'm, I'm going to just follow up. So, <laughs> and, and, and this also showed uh, the close relationship that Paul had with Philemon, you know, that, that he can move on. I mean, he wasn't, you know, he said what he had to say, and now he's moving on, like calling it done. And, uh, and he knew that, that Philemon was a hospitable person. He had showed great hospitality. And so, hey, go on to prepare, make a, prepare a room for me because uh, uh, my impending visit. Now, we don't know if he Paul ever uh, got to visit, but guess what? I bet the room was ready, Amen. you know, and, and, and that might even speak to, to the type of dwelling place he had, that he can have a room set aside just in case. I just think that Paul giving that extra, that last little bit of joy, because he's saying it with, um, you know, just an uh, answer to your prayers, so this man is just, he just probably overflowing now, saying, oh, I'm going to see Paul. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see Paul at some point. That's just, just expectations of some goodness to come mm -hmm. by seeing his friend Paul. Yeah. And, and the and some letter. Some look forward to it. Yeah, some look forward. Yeah, some look forward. That's good. And the latter part of that verse 22, for I hope that through your prayers, mm -hmm. I will be granted the gracious privilege of coming to you at Colossae. And so, so Paul is, uh, is, is, he wanted Philemon to, to pray, you know, uh, be prayerful about all of this that's getting ready to transpire. And also the, the, uh, the possibility of Paul visiting, you know, and it wasn't just a, a, a formality, you know, he didn't just want him to, to go through a ritual type thing. But, but Paul believed um, that through prayer, that Philemon um, and he would be together again. And they'll get a chance to fellowship again. And, uh, and remember, Paul always said, uh, you know, that, that I, he wanted people to pray for him. You know, his missions, his, uh, his travels, you know, pray for me. And uh, he, he always asked uh, people to pray. And uh, there again, he asked his friend. Remember, this is this is a friend. You know, pray for me. I, you know, you have friends that may call you up and ask you to pray for me. And, and uh, you take time. You say a prayer. And then, um, so Paul goes on as we reach the, toward the end of this letter here. He says, greetings, verse 23. Greetings to you from Apparatus, my fellow prisoner here uh, in the cause of Jesus Christ. So... Uh, there's another person there, and he's saying, now, this guy, uh, he, he probably was, well, was known, too. 
I mean, otherwise Paul would not have mentioned him to Philemon. So Philemon may have may know this person too. He says, uh, greetings from him. He's my fellow prisoner, and uh, and from Mark, uh, uh, Aristarchus, Damas, and Luke, my fellow workers. So he's um, he's uh, signaling, <laughs> signifying here. He's calling out some names, and these names. Uh, uh, we'll also mention if you read uh, Colossians, and we're going to study Colossians one of these days soon. Uh, <clears throat> these same names are mentioned in Coloss the letter to Colossians. So we know that, um, that, that there was an overlap there. And then uh, it says, uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you in spirit. We see um, uh, that, that there's an uh, everlasting endearment here. Uh, or everlasting enduring principle uh, in Paul's letter to Philemon. And Paul was not trying to get Philemon to, or Paul wasn't trying to overthrow uh, the culture uh, standing of how you treat your slaves, freeing your slaves. No, that he wanted that to be totally left up to Philemon, uh, Philemon's goodwill, how he treated his slaves. And so, so and, and as the pastor was saying, that had Paul demanded that this be done, then that could have caused a, I mean, you talk about 60 million slaves. I mean, Rome, I mean, that Rome had 60 million slaves. That's a lot of slaves. And they had those slaves under control, really. Uh, the, 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 the ordinances and the guidance of how they operated with slaves that kept them slaves in, t in check. And had this come off wrong, it could have threw everything uh, out of whack. And, uh, and it would have been a, a, a very ugly situation. And I think it would have been uglier than, than the children of Israel leaving Egypt. <laughs> because uh, they, did, they didn't fight when they left Egypt. But these, these slaves, I think, would have been fighting. Because don't forget, some of them were gladiators. Yeah. Uh, you know, skill, skill fight fighters. You know, so uh, the the whole uh, complex uh, of how these slaves were different from when they left Egypt. So it, it could have been a, a massive, uh, a massive thing. Uh, was uh, I'm gonna ask a question. Was On Onesimus was he obligated to return to his master? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And and yeah. So that's. That's what Paul uh, did. He said, I, I want to keep him. Well, not long he, he wasn't supposed to run away either. So I guess, he, I mean, he, he, he was converted. So he, mm -hmm. he, I guess he, by law, he wasn't returning back. By law, he was. I think he was returning back because of the change in him and because of Paul. Mm -hmm. One thing that had to do with both of them. Okay. Like I said, doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing the right thing there. said earlier that Onesimus had a was an impact and there was a, a bishop that was called Onesimus uh, later on and uh, this was uh, about a AD 110 AD and he was the the bishop of Ephesus and the theologian and scholars say that this is the same Onesimus that that uh, was with uh, with Paul. Yeah, the same uh, Onesimus that was with Philemon. So we see that as a result of Philemon doing the right thing, this person Onesimus end up still having a great impact. So remember that. That their, their meeting, Paul and, and Onesimus' meeting, wasn't by happenstance. And then Paul sending him back to Philemon, that wasn't by happenstance. You know, they were doing the right thing. And we see that Philemon did the right thing. And so now this young boy, because remember that he was a young person at the time. And I think some say that he was about 14 or 15 years old. So 
So uh, by the time that he went to Ephesus as the bishop, he was up in age, but he was probably about 70 years old then. So um, it very well could have been the same person. That, that ended up being this uh, this bishop of Ephesus. So you never know the impact that you're going to have on somebody's life when we do the right thing. And you know that's what we need to, to carry away with us is that that if we fail to do the right thing, uh, and and not that it's going to stop God right. from, from from accomplishing His will, but. You know, when, when God is prompting us to be involved in that, that purpose of yeah, somebody yeah. else's life, yeah, yeah, do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah do the, and be prayerful about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any, any comments? Yeah, you know, God, he is so strategic in what he does. And, you know, the community is he placed everything right in place <laughs> so that, like I said earlier, of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, if there's no other comments, uh, we're going to close uh, a few minutes early tonight. Uh, I think this was a good lesson, and we're going to be moving on to another another book here, uh, starting next week. Okay? Amen. Father God, thank you. God, because truly your word is rich and sharp. Sharpening it in two edges sword. And God, it cuts going in and it cuts coming out. But, Lord, it's not to wound us, but it's, Lord, it's to show us your grace and your mercy, to demonstrate your power and your authority. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So right now, Father, I pray your blessings upon your people, Lord, that you bless each and every one with the sound of my voice, Father, that you, God, will just pour out your blessings upon them, your comfort, your peace, and let them know that, yes, you go with us, wherever we are, yes. that you go with us. Thank you for that. So right now, Father, as we conclude this, this lesson, 
I just pray, Lord, that, that your word will continue to resonate in our hearts, that we won't sin against you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.